The following video is brought to you by Hostinger. Thanks to Hostinger for making this video possible. Windows Vista, perhaps the most infamous version of Windows ever, and definitely not the most popular. It wasn't good, and came off the back of the extremely successful Windows XP, and didn't exactly live up to expectations. Hey, how's it going? I'm Josh from Nappy One Tech, and today we're trying to use Windows Vista 13 years later. I did this with Windows XP a little while back and a popular request was for me to do the same with Windows Vista, so today we're gonna do just that. I have that old PC that originally ran Windows 7 and then XP, so I figure we'll just use that. If my voice sounds a little rough, it's because I've been sick for the last week and it sucks, but I'm getting better. And you know what doesn't suck? Today's sponsor, Hostinger. Hostinger is an extremely fast, reliable web hosting service that complements its very fast speeds with a very affordable price tag. Are you looking to build a website? Maybe you have a personal business. Maybe you just want to try for fun. I've taken a fair few web dev courses myself at this point, and I can honestly say I really enjoy doing this type of thing, and I'd encourage you to give it a shot too. HTML, CSS, it's easy enough to pick up, and it can be a lot of fun. And if that's something you're into, or maybe you just need website hosting for a professional professional reasons, Hostinger is the way to do it. Hostinger is a very easy to use service when it comes to web hosting. I even made a site just for fun, 91tech.ca. You can check it out, it's live. There's nothing really there yet, but I, I slapped it all together with Hostinger and imported it in about five minutes. It was super duper easy to get it up and running. If you use the top link in the description as well as coupon code 91tech, you can get up to 91% off yearly web hosting plans. That's a pretty killer deal for a pretty killer service. Hostinger is fast, reliable, and most importantly, affordable. Again, top link in the description and coupon code 91 tech to get up to 91% off. Big thanks to Hostinger for sponsoring this video. Just a heads up that this video gets kinda long, so if you wanna skip ahead, there are timestamps in the description below. So if you remember from my last video, we had quite a few problems. Driver issues, install issues, it was a process. But ultimately, we did get XP up and running, and in a separate video, I even tried quite a few games on it, and was surprisingly successful. All in all, I think it was a fun time, so today we're gonna try to do the same thing with Windows Vista. Nothing could possibly go wrong, right? How foolish I was at the start of this video, but I'll come back to that. So the first thing I did was try to create a bootable USB. Now this didn't work for Windows XP, but my guess as to why was because it was Windows XP and it wasn't really made to boot off of a USB. Google searching kind of backed me up there, but regardless, uh, I created a bootable USB for Windows Vista, put it into the old computer and attempted to install Vista and just wipe the XP drive completely. And uh, as soon as I tried to boot from the USB, it was actually starting to work. It said Windows loading files and then it crashed. Okay, okay, not a great start, but this is the 64-bit version of Windows Vista. As far as I know, the CPU I'm running, which I'll get to in a bit here, should be capable of running 64-bit software, but maybe not. So I went and I got the 32-bit version of Vista on the USB, and we crashed again. Okay, so for some context here, this is the PC. We're looking at an AMD Athlon X3 440 processor with 4 gigabytes of RAM and a GTX 750 Ti. Those are the main specs anyway. Way. It did the job with XP, and honestly, it should easily do the job with uh, Windows Vista as well. So, not all is lost. We're going to try using a DVD. So, I made a Windows Vista boot DVD. Uh, this was my XP one. This was a CD, but it did the job. Um, and I think XP was made to boot off of a CD anyway, whereas Vista was made to boot off of a DVD, as the ISO file is quite big. I don't know. Maybe it can be booted off a of CD too, I don't know. But anyways, uh, yeah, so I made a DVD, tried it, didn't work, realized it was 64-bit, so 32-bit, tried it, crashed, okay, so far this isn't going very well. So at this point I'm already extremely frustrated. Um, you can hear that I'm talking quite fast, and that's because for the last 24 hours this is all I've been doing. Now this error screen here is unfortunately quite vague, so online support wasn't helpful beyond update your BIOS and don't install Windows Vista in the first place. I'm not out of options here, and the reason I'm not out of options is because with Windows XP it's easy to get to Windows Vista, or at least it's supposed to be. So before I was putting XP on a blank drive. But with Windows Vista, what I could theoretically do is just upgrade like somebody would have, you know, 10 years ago from XP to Windows Vista from Windows XP. 
It's supposed to be a relatively easy upgrade process so that you keep all your files. Now there's no going back, but I should be able to do that. So I inserted the DVD, the 32-bit one, because I was running 32-bit Windows XP, and sure enough, uh, the auto setup actually showed up. So finally, we were getting somewhere. So I started to go through the process, and almost immediately it said that it couldn't do it. Now, at first I was really confused as to why this is, and to sum it up briefly for you, because this took me many hours. The reason it was like that is, for some reason, Windows XP went on my L drive, not my C drive. And because of that, the DVD didn't know what to do because it was looking for the C drive, and the C drive, for some reason, was a weird 90 megabyte partition. Anyways, I kind of know why that is, if you're going into the comments to tell me exactly why. I kind of know why it is. It has to do with the way the old boot drive was set up with Windows 7. Regardless, I cleared out everything, got rid of that old hard drive, reset Windows XP, and bam, now we have a fresh install of Windows XP on the C drive and we should be able to run the Windows Vista setup. So I started and sure enough everything was actually working. I was finally being able to run Windows Vista. And so everything was going well until it wanted to restart my computer. Okay, whatever. And it crashed. Yeah. So this isn't good. So essentially it gave me two options, continue the Windows setup, which would cause it to crash, or roll back to Windows XP. So I guess it has a one more chance to roll back thing. So that's what I did. This was a problem and I didn't know what to do. I tried everything. Uh, eventually I just gave up. Uh, as far as I could tell, this computer just will not let me boot off of anything. Windows XP, it'll boot off of fine when it comes to the, that CD, but when it comes to any Vista, DVD, or USB, it'll just crash. What I decided to do was pull out a different PC from my closet. That's right, I have another one back there, from about the same era. Say hello to this PC. Uh, I don't know what processor it has yet, anyway. Uh, it has no RAM. It has a 450 watt power supply, which is not bad. And uh, yeah, that that's about it. So what I figured I would do is I would pull out the RAM from the Windows XP computer, as well as the hard drive, and I would try to run Vista on this computer, because again, it looks like it's from around that era. It should be able to run it fine, and I'll be able to do this video finally. So that's what I tried to do. I pulled out the RAM, tried to fit it in, and I couldn't because it was DDR3. So it turns out this computer required DDR2 RAM, which I don't have. I have DDR1 RAM, I have DDR3 RAM, and I have DDR4 RAM. I don't have DDR2 RAM. And so I went on Craigslist, and lo and behold, someone actually had DDR2 RAM, and they were willing to meet me that night, in like half an hour after I contacted them. So that was awesome. So I went to Tim Hortons, I paid 40 bucks for 4 gigabytes of RAM. I was gonna lowball him, but I mean, he was willing to meet me in half an hour, so I was like, alright, I'll just give him 40 bucks, not too bad. And this here is the RAM. It's NVIDIA Patriot RAM, and I have to say, it actually looks pretty cool. I don't know what happened nowadays RAM just doesn't seem to have that cool touch to it anymore you know it's not like cool or modern or sleek but it's kind of quirky I don't know I really like it RGB is okay but if you take away the RGB from today's RAM it doesn't really look that good in my opinion anyway I kind of miss this style uh, so I, I plugged in the DDR2 RAM, and then I plugged in the XP drive. And then of course I couldn't forget the GTX 750 Ti. And then I went to turn on the computer, and was able to get into the BIOS, so that was a good sign. In the BIOS I was able to see the system information, and as you can see here, the computer was made in 2009, so that's kind of cool. You can also see that it has an Intel Core 2 Duo processor, uh, this was pretty common for the time, I don't know how top end it was back in 2009. So I went to exit the BIOS and I put in the Windows Vista DVD into the computer and my plan was to boot off of that. Now I forgot something, I forgot to plug in the SATA cable from the DVD player to the motherboard, but I didn't know this yet. So when I booted up the computer, it defaulted to go to the hard drive I had plugged in, the Windows XP one. Now here's the funny thing, before I had turned off and kind of just scrapped the older computer, I was still trying to set up Windows Vista, and it was in the restart state. So when this newer computer was trying to boot off of this hard drive, it actually booted into Windows Vista. So completely accidentally, I already had Windows Vista running on this computer. And you know what? I'll take it. We finally did it. I know I rushed through all that pretty quickly, but I was so happy when this worked. Oh man, I, this took so long. This was hours, this was a whole day. It was a process. Anyways, uh, so I was into Windows Vista. Here we are, finally. 
it doesn't look good and that's because we need to install drivers for the GTX 750 Ti. So the first thing I wanted to do was of course install the drivers for internet. Now what I've been using is a little USB wireless adapter uh, from D-Link. So I moved the drivers over from my main PC over to the Vista computer and installed those first things first, and boom, we seem to have internet. So that was fairly simple. Uh, and from there, I opened Internet Explorer and it crashed. All right, so that's not a good sign. So I closed the Internet Explorer, reopened it, and it crashed. This repeated about five or 10 or 15 or whatever times. Uh, I tried a few times. <laughs> and what I figured, and this is true by the way, because I looked it up after, the homepage that it's trying to go to causes the browser to crash. So what I was trying to do was stop the loading of that page before it could try to open it, and I couldn't get it to stop. I tried, I wasn't fast enough. So I went to my main PC, I downloaded an old version of Google Chrome, put it on the Vista computer, installed it, and well, now I have Google Chrome and things are working better, or at least they should be, uh, but they're not because apparently every single site in the world is not a secure connection, except for Bing. Ironically, I tried every website. Bing was the only one that worked. Now, the reason for this was a really dumb one. Uh, when I had set up Windows Vista originally, when I was going through the setup process that I was booted into, it asked me to set the system time. So I did, uh, but apparently it didn't remember the system time or something went wrong and it didn't have the correct time on the clock. And so what happens when your computer is out of sync when it comes to time with the rest of the internet is it won't let you uh, go on secure sites such as Google. So I fixed that and sure enough, uh, everything was working from there. I was able to access the internet and you know what? It was actually working quite well. I could do pretty much anything. So next thing I went to install drivers. I did that, rebooted, and bam, I had Windows Vista and it looked really good. 1080p Windows Vista, it doesn't get any better than that. All right, so a few things to do. I want to download Steam. I want to download Minecraft. I want to try some basic things like YouTube. You know, I want to just uh, have some fun, do some things. So first I installed Steam uh, using the same method I did for Windows XP, link to the video on how to do that in the description, not my video, just some ones I found that worked really well. Uh, essentially, it's just an old version of Steam and it blocks Steam from trying to update anymore. So it works in case you didn't no, Steam hasn't supported Vista or XP since I think January of 2019. Anyways, uh, so I went to do that and I also wanted to install Minecraft. Minecraft is fun and it's a good thing to test on this because it should work. Not the newest version, but a version decently new, hopefully. So I downloaded the Minecraft installer and I accidentally downloaded both the MSI and EXE file. That's fine. I went to open the MSI file and nothing opened. So then I tried to do the EXE file. Windows Vista just sat there. It did not try to open anything. I have no idea why it was doing this, uh, and I didn't really look into it too much, but yeah, it just would not open Minecraft. But on a more positive note, I was able to get Steam set up. And once I did, I started downloading some games. And in the meantime, I went on YouTube and whatnot, and YouTube was working fine. And uh, that pretty much was the same for most internet browsing. I was able to get a 1080p video up and running without any issue. It was smooth, it looked good. I'm sure 4K would probably brutalize this computer, but 1080p was not bad at all. And don't forget about gadgets. These were kind of cool, kind of pointless, definitely probably more on the pointless side, but kind of neat. I've always liked these, or at least I did until it was revealed that they opened up a ton of security vulnerabilities, which is why they were removed. But still, they are here by default on Windows Vista. Windows Vista was also the OS that introduced transparent windows. So you can see here, it's slightly transparent at the top. This was called Arrow, I believe, and it's pretty cool. And also a design element that's used in almost every OS nowadays. It's used on Mac, it's used on Windows 10. It's pretty darn cool. It was also quite intensive on most computers back in the day, which is uh, yet another reason why Windows Vista wasn't exactly well received. Windows Vista was too power heavy. That's why uh, it, it failed, or a big reason it failed. And it also was just a little bit too different from XP. It almost did uh, too many new things. But in all honesty, when it comes to basic stuff like email, YouTube, Google, uh, this computer would be fine. But when it comes to Steam, things unfortunately did not stay fine. So I downloaded a, a few games, uh, Tomb Raider, Rocket League, a uh, couple more games, Counter-Strike, Half-Life 2. And so I started with Tomb Raider and I ran the benchmark sequence. 
which I didn't get on film. But then it crashed. It crashed after it finished the benchmark. And when I say crashed, I don't mean that the computer crashed. It was fine. I meant the app crashed, which I can live with that. Uh, it is a more intensive game. Maybe the CPU can't handle it. So I went to open something I knew would work for sure. And that's Half-Life 2. Half-Life 2 is a game that I easily ran on Windows XP. Source Engine games are actually quite well optimized from what I've seen on older PCs. They almost always work. So I opened Half-Life 2 and it was opening, saw the valve symbol, all was good, and it blue screened. The whole computer crashed and rebooted. At this point to say I was annoyed is a bit of an understatement. I was apparently fully updated according to the computer. So this was Service Pack 2. Uh, I believe I did download the latest ISO available. So honestly, I don't know. I don't know if I'm missing more drivers. I've installed everything I can possibly think of. I really don't know what the problem here is. And at this point, I was too frustrated to continue. So this is pretty much where the Windows Vista computer ends its story. I know this video might feel a little bit anticlimactic. And uh, the truth is, for me, Windows Vista has been a horrible, horrible experience that did not work whatsoever. Checking in a few hours later, I discovered the reason everything was crashing when I tried to open a game. And it's because my uh, drivers for the graphics card would crash as I opened the game. So GL, driver, query, or something like that would just stop working. Now, I looked up how to fix this and I tried to install the redistributables and whatnot to get it to work, but I kept getting uh, this whenever I tried to do that. So uh, yeah, I give up. Honestly, I really considered calling this video failing to use Windows Vista instead of trying to use Windows Vista, but ultimately I decided against it because I was really trying to use Windows Vista, even if I did ultimately more or less fail. I did try, and so I think that is a pretty accurate title, and failing to use Windows Vista is a bit of a downer, so I went with the former. I am genuinely curious, uh, if, if you know what some of my issues are, let me know in the comments down below, I'd uh, love to hear it. Hopefully it was nothing super minor and embarrassing, like uh, the Windows XP video. I'd be lying if I said I was a computer pro, because I'm not, but I did my best here, and overall, you know... It wasn't really a fun time, but it was an experience. If you guys want to see more Windows Vista, I, I would be willing to try a, a gaming video for it like I did with XP. I would probably do a fresh install 64-bit this time and see how that goes. So let me know in the comments down below if you want that, as well as by hitting that like button. If I remember correctly, DirectX 11 is compatible with Windows Vista, which means a lot more games should be compatible as opposed to Windows XP. So that would change things up. I would like to do that. So if you guys are interested, who knows? What are your thoughts on Windows Vista? Did you ever use it? Do you like it? Hate it? Let me know in the comments down below. If you enjoyed watching me suffer, maybe hit that like button and consider subscribing for more content just like this. You can follow me over on Twitter and Instagram at 91 underscore tech if you'd like to for some reason. Also, another big thanks to Hostinger for sponsoring this video. Remember, top link in the description, coupon code 91 tech, also 91tech.ca, because why not? Thank you so much for watching. I'm Josh from 91 tech, and I will see you all next time.